Wernicke Korsakoff is the topic uh, for this video and uh, there's essentially two components as you can probably uh, deduce from the term the first it refers to an encephalopathy which is um, um, called Wernicke encephalopathy and the second component of it is Korsakoff psychosis and um, the second part is a late complication if the first part is untreated and this is all due to chronic use of alcohol so alcoholics so let's get into what this is all about so this is an alcoholic related alcoholics they're basically the ones that get this and initially you have this Wernicke encephalopathy and the reason is because chronic use of alcohol can interfere with the absorption of thymine and thymine is a uh, vitamin it's also known as vitamin B1 and when uh, you when an alcoholic um, is um, been abusing alcohol uh, for you know many many years the absorption of thymine is uh, uh, been interfered with and also most alcoholics in addition to being alcoholics tend to have very poor nutrition so that contributes also so the the GI tract absorption of uh, thymine is is severely hindered now this uh, thymine deficiency or vitamin D B12 deficiency leads to some very characteristic symptoms and those comprise the Wernicke encephalopathy the first thing that can happen is something called nystagmus which is basically the horizontal um, and can be vertical rapid movements of the eyes you can also get ataxia which is a gait abnormality a neurologic defect and the person can also uh, present with uh, confusion, uh, inattention, disorientation, those types of things. So, like a clinical scenario, basically would be an alcoholic that all of a sudden presents with this, and um, the diagnosis, therefore, is really just clinical based on history. But although not necessary to diagnose Wernicke's encephalopathy, they do obviously do te tests when in the ER such as a toxicology screen or uh, liver function tests which are very very commonly done just to kind of see if there's any other etiology for the person's presentation so the symptoms can improve but usually within 24 hours but if untreated what happens is in 80% of cases it can lead to Korsakoff Korsakoff psychosis so what is the treatment as you could probably figure out by now giving the uh, vitamin that they have been unable to absorb properly and that is thymine and thymine is also known as vitamin B1 sometimes it's written as vitamin B1 and initially it's given IV and then later on after the patient is stabilized you send them home on the on oral thymine or thymine tablets thymine pills now let's talk a little bit about this Korsakoff psychosis now you might con might think that it's pretty much the same thing you know confusion sounds just like encephalopathy but psychosis can present with um, a couple things that are a little bit different that is the first one is amnesia where they just start forgetting things and the second term is something con called confabulation and this is a component of Korsakoff what confabulation means is basically the person starts just making up stories um, to describe um, you know everyday events so fabricated or imaginary stories 
um, accounts of events. And that's something that can start happening um, in Korsakoff psychosis. And interestingly, the treatment for Korsakoff is the exact same as the treatment for Wernicke, which is thymine. So it's, it's, that's why it's grouped together as one syndrome, Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome. So let's look at some clinical vignettes. A malnourished, middle-aged, homeless man is brought to the ER. He is disoriented to person, place, and time and unable to walk. Most likely that's ataxia. Without assistance, his temperature is 98, blood pressure is 134, pulse is 86, respiration is 18. A neurologic exam reveals lateral nystagmus. Evaluation of strength and sensation cannot be performed. Which of the following is most appropriate next step in management? Oftentimes in the vignette, they don't give you everything. They don't even mention that he is an alcoholic. Now, how do I know that, right? <laughs> but the thing is, the urgency of the situation is such that you need to give him thymine immediately and you need to give it as an IV form. And the reason is because if you don't, then in the first 24 hours, um, it can be very detrimental to the person. He's already developed some pretty severe neurologic um, uh, consequences. Now these probably will be done uh, they probably would do a tox screen, but the very next step is you need to get that IV thymine started right away. And one last one. A homeless man is brought to the emergency room by the police after they observe him st staggering down the street in a disoriented state. He appears malnourished, smells like wine. The edge of the liver is difficult to palpate, but feels nodular to the examiner. Also noted on physical exam of multiple bruises, and a new bruise is produced by the blood pressure cuff. Ocular exam reveals horizontal nystagmus and bilateral rectus palsies. Deficiency of which of the following vitamins is most likely responsible for the neurologic problems observed in this patient? Well, this is a very good case describing a patient that's come in with Wernicke. Wernicke encephalopathy and this clinical vignette does tell you a little bit more about it he kind of tells you a little bit about his alcohol and he also presents with some pretty classic uh, findings which are uh, the nystagmus and um, his it looks like his it was, at least sounds like his liver is uh, enlarged so he's definitely confused and he's um, they even say that, um, that he's disoriented. So he's definitely got the encephalopathy. And this question essentially is just asking which of the following enzymes, uh, sorry, which of the following vitamins is deficient in the patient? And the answer, of course, is thymine. And thymine is also known as vitamin B1.